Hello everybody, this is Stuart Wilde of StuartWilde.com. I'm talking today with Gerald Chalente. He publishes the Trends Journal and his website is TrendsResearch.com. He's a well-known forecaster and he forecasts of financial events and other events of historic importance. And I want to ask him a couple of questions today about the coming economic collapse. Hello Gerald, how are you? Hello Stuart, I'm fine. So look, I heard you say in Ireland that you believe that there's going to be an economic collapse. What are the sort of bullet points or what are the stages that an, in, that an amateur investor should look for so they don't lose their shorts? History is repeating itself. You go back to the crash of 1929. What followed it? The Depression. What followed that? Currency wars. There were currency wars raging. In Japan, they went off the gold standard. They lowered the value of the yen. It fell, oh, some 60% against the dollar and some 40% against the pound sterling. And that meant they could sell more of their garbage, excuse me, exports to other countries at a cheaper price. And then it went to trade wars and then it went to world war. We had the panic, so this is what the people should look for. We had the panic of 08. We had a great depression. There's a depression in Spain. There's a depression in Greece. There's a depression in Portugal. There's a depression going on in Ireland. It's hitting in Italy and it's hitting in the UK. It's hitting in Slovenia, it's hitting in Hungary. It's hitting here in the United States. Can you imagine, Stuart? that the prostitutes are still calling 26-27% unemployment in Spain and in Greece a recession. You know, what am I, six years old? And now you have currency wars going on. Pick up any paper. Here, the Financial Times. Bundesbank had warns against EU talking down the euro. France wants to talk down the euro, lower its value, so they can export more product. You pick it up, it continues on and on and on. It never stops. It's one after another. It's Venezuela devaluation, dense big companies. What's the G20 talking about now? Oh, they're talking about the currency problems. I've been talking about a currency war going on it was going to hit, I said it would hit two years ago. Now they're going to, the trade wars are going to heat up and world war. So to make a very long story short, I'm still invested in gold and because interest rates are so cheap because of the currency wars, I buy valuable properties. Like I just bought a 1750s house on the most historic corner in the United States to preserve it and because I value it. And I got a, a mortgage, a commercial mortgage at such low, ridiculous prices that I did So do you feel that this currency war is already happening? I mean, Venezuela devalued the other day by 45%. Is that the first sort of shot across the, the bows of the currency war ship? No. No, the first one, I got, I'll, make, I'll make up a word, all right? We'll call it quantitative easing. Yeah. How about printing a load of shit money? <laughs> trillions, many trillions, right? Yeah, and I got a good one for you, the other side of the pond over there. How about Elthro, long-term refinancing operations? Yes. We'll yes. give the banks all the dough they need and pay it back and make interest on it while you're holding it. And I got another one. How about OMT? OMT, ongoing monetary transactions for all the wankers. So, so we're you... making this crap up. The Europeans are doing it. The Americans are doing it. Venezuela and China's doing it too. China's dumping the money into their system to keep pumping it up. They're lowering the demands from banks and calling back bad loans. Every country around the world is trying to compete for the shrinking pie of business, and they're doing it by devaluing their currencies so they can sell their product to another country. 
So as I understand it, Gerald, um, the collapse is Im imminent because these currency wars are now, they're not like in the future, they're happening today. Again, read the headlines. What are they talking about at the G20 meeting? The currency wars. There's even, you know, papers in the UK, what is it, CAM or one of those, I think that's the name of it. And the headline the other day, currency wars. I now, so it's, everybody knows it's a currency war, but they're not calling it that. And then it leads to trade wars and then to world wars. We've been on this path before. And that's what this Trends Journal, the last edition, is basically a lot about. Are the world wars they're leading us to? The sociopaths and psychopaths. I mean, look at it. Look at the problems they're having over there in France. I got an idea. Let's go into Mali. Yeah, they can't get over the French Sudan trip, you know? Yeah. And then look what they're doing now that they destabilized Libya, and now they're destabilizing Syria. There are riots in Tunisia. Egypt is up for grabs. They're rioting in Bahrain. Yemen is in a civil war. You have, you have class warfare going on out throughout Europe. Millions of indignados taken to the street in Spain. Yeah. Angry people everywhere. And when all else fails, they take you to war. This is a repeat of the 1930s. And you believe in gold. You don't believe that gold will deflate if there's an economic crisis and we see deflation everywhere. Do you think gold will go down and then up? Or do you think it's going to hold steady here at about 1650, I think it was last time I looked? I think it's going to go down. Probably more than go up, my odds are. But it makes no difference. I'm in it long term. And just look how much gold Russia just bought. Look how much gold the Chinese are buying. So when you're debasing a currency, it's not about inflation, it's about what that currency can buy. Yes. So for example, if the price of, let's say, a pound of coffee hasn't gone up, but if you live in Zimbabwe, it's going to take a lot more Zimbabwean dollars to buy it. So you don't see inflation in the cost of the product, you see devaluation in the value of the currency. And that's what they're all doing. They're debasing the currencies. And Stuart, very important. People say to me, do you think they're manipulating the currency, uh, the gold prices? How about the LIBOR scam? Yes. Yeah, everybody listening, grow up. The game is rigged. They're rigging hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of interest rates. Capisce? Yeah. Yeah, capisce. I mean, I think that maybe the best thing for the small investors to stay out of equities and then buy little amounts of gold as the price goes down and up and build up a portfolio that way. I, I don't give financial advice. A good friend of mine, to me, has the best strategy that I know. Every month with the spare cash that he has, when he has it, he buys a little bit of silver and a little bit of gold. He buys what he can afford it. He's been doing this for about at 25 years. Wow. Cat's set. Cash. And you think about you know all the dips and the you know, but then when you look at that chart over the long period. It just keeps going up. To me, that's a sensible strategy. Well, thank you very much, Gerald, for coming and talking to me this morning. And um, I hope I get to see you again when you come to Ireland next. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Bye. you.